Hey everybody, Fish Lotta here with Fisher Review. Today I've got this Top Fin Pro Series 120 canister filter, and we're gonna do an unboxing and review and see what this thing's all about. Now, this is from PetSmart. I bought it, they didn't pay for it. It's not sponsored in any way. I just wanna see what this filter was like. There's really not much out there about it. So maybe it's a great filter. Now, I've read the reviews on PetSmart's website. Some of them aren't so great. A lot of those complaints do revolve around the, um, the smart part of this filter. The, there's like an app, but it's not really an app, it's a web page that you can look at the status of the filter, which sounds like a cool idea. But of course, if that causes any problem or makes it to where it doesn't work right, that would be negative. So we'll see as we go. Now let's tear this box open. Got this plastic band. Is it gonna open that way? Yes. Okay, it's a big box. There's no doubt about it. This filter says it's good for up to 120 gallon aquariums and filters 450 gallons per hour. It has some parts included with it, which you can see on the back. We'll see those as we get them out. I'm going to pop this open and lay it down on its side so that it looks good on camera. Okay, it's a big box. Get this out. is a big canister filter. I would say the first thing to worry about with a big canister filter is that it might be too tall to fit under your aquariums. Keep that in mind. This one is fairly big. I'm not putting it under one right now. I'll be putting it on one of the tanks out here in the fish room. So it looks pretty cool. You can see the front of it here. And it's all put together. What else is in the box? We have also got lots of cardboard, which we don't need. I hope there was nothing in that part. And a little white box that comes with it. Some tubing and a power cord, which uh, comes out, kind of interesting. Some intake tubes and output tubes and some other parts that go with those, suction cups, etc. So we can set the box aside. It comes with a manual that's kind of a booklet, kind of, that's a big manual for a filter. All right, so we'll take these parts just kind of going along with the instructions here. We've got this bag of parts. We have this U-shaped tube here and we have to put this piece on first. It's kind of snaps in weird. It looks like it's not gonna fit, but there's a smaller part down inside here. Snap on this strainer, set that aside. Got this other tube, which is a U-shape, but has a little thing on it. It says to use a little piece of the tubing, cut off a little bit to make a thing to hold it on to the spray bar. So I have a knife. This is the fun part. This is a sharp knife. Let's see if we can show fish Lottie going to the hospital here. Let's not do that again. Um, <laughs> I didn't do it on the channel, but I've done it. Um, let's see, let's do that. This is a very sharp razor, which helps. Otherwise this tubing can be really hard to cut. You could also use a tubing cutter if you had such a thing handy. Most people probably don't. Uh, take this tube here. And we'll stick this on here. This is a little bit of a strain and my arm doesn't like it. Okay, so you put that on there like that. And now we can take this part and put on here. This will probably be just as fun as the other part. Just kind of squeeze it down in there and rotate it out. I think I would prefer, if it was my choice, that if they're gonna make a filter like this, that they don't make you cut the tubing and shove it in there. There should be a nice connecting piece that snaps on both sides. Very simple. I know the tubing is simple. You can replace it later. Maybe that gives you some options for if you want to put this farther away, down at an angle, whatever. That's, I get it, okay, but that's, that's really not how I think it should be made. That's, that's my opinion. And then there is an end cap that goes in here. So we snap that in here like that. Not entirely easy to put in, but not that bad. Okay, so now I would just guess I want this to be aimed up just a bit because you want these spray bars to agitate the surface of the water and oxygenate the tank that way. So I'm trying to aim these holes up. I don't know which way this will end up. May have to redo it. The suction cups are next. So we take them out of their little cardboard carrier. 
Okay, and they go on these little hooks here. So you just snap them on. So I'm gonna snap all those on. Okay, now I have all four of these snapped on. And you would put a couple on this bar here, like this, towards the back, away from the holes. So in, if you've seen these little holes here, this is the spray bar. Now the other ones also go on this tube here. So we snap them, and like so. Okay, and that'll help you stick it to the back of your aquarium. And we have the power supply, which is probably what's in this box. So it has an external power supply, external cube type power supply. So it's this, and then that other cord that was here, this cord just plugs into here, like so. The power supply does say Eheim on it. So there you go. It's really hard to figure out where the heck it plugs in, but <laughs> I found it. So it is on the back here. It's this little weird shaped thing. It just plugs up under here like that. So I was looking around it for a hole, right? I know, but of course you don't want water going in things. So that makes sense. There's this kind of a, a cover here. If water would drip, it would drip around it. So keep in mind that with a filter like this, you might be used to your canister filters where the power cord can't yank out. It can yank out of this one. So, you know, if you were to do something, it could pull out, your filter could stop running. We'll put that back in there. Now, opening this thing is kind of interesting too. I was wanting to pull on this part here because it's the middle. Wouldn't you pull on the middle? Nope, nope, nope. You pull on the sides, see right here? And then there's four of these latches. So we'll do that again, pull on the side and it pops up. Do this one, do this one, get that out of the way. And then the top, heavy as it is, will lift off. Inside we can see there's an oval, an avocado shape, we'll call it, okay? Make sure when you put the lid back on, the top back on, that it's lining up with that. It's only gonna go one way when it goes on, even though otherwise it probably wants to fit every which way, but it has to be on the right way. Inside the top, we have the impeller housing. We'll take that apart just to see what's in there. Just give it a twist, pop this off. The shaft came out with it. Perhaps it's meant to stay like that. Looks like it is. You can reach in there and grab the fins. So this is something you'd want to keep clean. I always say this about impellers. Brush this off, brush off the fins, brush out the hole. There is a little slot here to try to catch the gunk and shoot it out, but it never hurts to clean these. They do get bad after a while or get java moss in them. If you have anything like me with java moss all over the place, put that back in carefully, put this back. Doesn't seem to want to fight me. It goes in real easy. Some of these are really hard to put together. So that's a nice thing. Flip this over. And then we've also got on the top, we've got a button here to prime the filter once we get it going. And we've got an on off lever, which is, I guess, to shut down the flow of it. It doesn't latch these things in at all. That's what this red button does. So this red button, if you push it, it will make sure we're in the off position, I guess. Push it and it has to be off before that'll happen. So that's why that's there. If this was on and you did that, water would gush out of your tank all over the place. So this comes out for when you want to take the filter out from underneath your aquarium. Your hoses will be on here. So put that back in, put it back that way. Okay, there's also a little light here for if this thing's connected to Wi-Fi, we'll worry about that in a bit. I'll go ahead and take this off so I can put the hoses on here. I'll just cut them equal lengths and hope that that works out. So we flip it to the off position, push the red button, pop it out, set this over here a minute. And we've got to take this tubing and I'll cut it to equal lengths. Ooh, I've got to get the tubing cutter. That'll be so much more fun. If we can get this situated about equal lengths would be about here where my finger is. Tubing cutter, this is fun, right? Open it up. Need to open it so it's open all the way. And we'll help it a little bit. Now we take this and what's nice about this for this vinyl tubing is it will go right through it like it's nothing. Now, if you've ever cut this with scissors, which the instruction book for this shows some scissors, I, no, that's not going to work. I mean, maybe if you got really good scissors. So I've cut the tubes. They're approximately equal length. Let's see if I did a good job. Uh, did a terrible job. <laughs> okay, well, so be it. What you do with these is you shove these onto these right here, and then there is a clip that goes on there so we can show you how that works. So let's see how fun this is. Can't be as bad as the Marine Land, right? 
<clears throat> there, that's not so bad. I've got the tubes on there. It took me about 30 minutes to get the Marineland tubes on on the one I did for that. So here is this little clip. Let's see how much fun this is. So it's kind of the same two pieces, right? They're not different, but if you've turned one around and do it like this, now they'll go together, okay? So it'll snap in like that. So we put that on here and I think it needs to go, it's gotta go below the barbs. If it doesn't, if you put it above the barbs, it's not doing anything. So we put it at the very bottom of this, put it on the switch side first, like this. Either way, probably. Make sure we're going the opposite way with the other piece. Get it up under there and snap it. Well, that's not too bad, huh? Not too shabby. Is that really all there is to it? Wow. If that's enough to hold it on, then hey, more power to it. It's, uh, I guess if, if there's something I could say, I. As much as I hate putting the Marineland ones on, I know they're really screwed on there, but this is this is fine. So as long as that doesn't want to come off, I don't know, ever, because it would drain your tank. Now the hoses are ready. We can put them in the top. There are some arrows here to show the direction the water will be going. That's handy. I don't know if you can see that, but there they are. So put that in here like that, snap it in. Get those out of the way. So this tube on the left side as I face it goes to the output. So put that on there. That's also gonna squeeze on just like that one did on the spray bar. I'm just, again, like a little leery of not having any barbs. Looking at the instructions, the spray bar is meant to actually go in the aquarium on the side. Uh, I guess if you put it on the back, that's gonna be impossible because of the way this tube's bent. So you can't really Put it on the back. Um, I guess if you put a longer little piece, I, I don't know. You need an elbow to put this on the back. That's that's my point. This intake also has to get the hose squished onto it. So we'll squish the hose on. <clears throat> okay. So now we have the output and the intake connected for what it's worth. I'm gonna set this aside. Let's see what's inside the filter. What does filter come with? So here's the top chamber. Little handles to lift it out. Top chamber has blue foam. The blue foam is coarse foam. This is uh, something you would rinse out at the sink and probably almost never have to replace. This should not really fall apart. You just go to the sink, rinse it out. People, you know, maybe you want to rinse it out in a bucket of treated water with no chlorine. That's fine. I usually rinse them out at the sink. I get away with it. Um, you might not, so be careful. But um, that is the top part. There's a little flap here. This is interesting too. It looks like an area you would want to keep clean. You can see through there. Um, so there's that. Okay, the next part is a little harder to get out compared to what I'm used to with canister filters. There's a little place to stick your finger though. Little plastic grate filter floss stuff. Now this stuff, of course, you can rinse out, but it probably won't hold up to too much of that and it would have to be replaced periodically, whether that be once a month, once every few months, whichever, it's a canister filter, it depends on how many fish you've got in your tank. So now there is a bucket in here. This thing comes with no media. So there are, is one empty bucket, two empty buckets, three empty buckets. So there's nothing else, that's the bottom of the bucket. So it's nice and clear, I like that. It's uh, it's nice to see what's going on in there. When they're totally opaque, I know this is not clear, it's translucent, you can see through it a bit. Um, but this, anyway, has no media in it. I am going to put some older bio balls in here, I think, let's see if they will fit. I've got some old bio balls, which are previously used. They were really gross, I cleaned them up. That one went right back in the bucket, that was perfect. Okay, so, these are just typical bio balls. There's, this is just a random assortment of used bio balls I got from somebody. So there's black and blue and light blue, all different kinds. I like these, these are cool. But anyway, 
Don't know what brand these are, they're just used. You could buy ceramic rings that are sold by Top Fin for this or other companies. You could buy their bio balls, which the picture of those I've seen look a lot like these black ones, which might be what these are from. So they do fit in here. I could put quite a few. I have about two gallons of bio balls here. <laughs> so why do I have two gallons of bio balls? Well, I bought them used. So believe me, there was a garbage can full of them I could have gotten, but I didn't know how many spiders were in it. So we could fill this chamber with bio balls like this. Okay, that's one option. Another option I've seen is that uh, people use these little scrubby sponges from the dollar store. So I guess that's fine. These have, were in a canister filter. I've cleaned them off. They've, they're dry. They've been not used in months, but people can pack those into a chamber like this. There's an awful lot of surface area. It's not a bad idea. I'm not going to put carbon in this filter right now, although you could certainly put carbon or other media in one of these trays. Right now, this will be on a 55 gallon aquarium. I'm just going to put a ton of biomedia in here and uh, see what happens. Now I've got two trays filled with bio balls and for the heck of it, one tray filled with scrubbies. Try to put all these in here. I made sure none of these trays are overfilled, I don't think. I think they'll squish down below the level. I'm just kind of testing with my hand. So let's do that. I'll put the scrubbies in first. Let's not knock everything over. These go one way. Notice the notch on the container. See that it's not, put it in front of me. See there's a, a, a corner that's cut. It's like Battlestar Galactica. Let's see if you get that one. Okay, now. Let's lower this in here. So when you put the first container in here, there's a looks like there's a little gap here. That is as far as it goes. So there is supposed to be a space here. Otherwise, you sit there thinking this won't go all the way in. But there is a, a little place that stops it there. So that's normal. So let's take this one and lower it down. Find the right place for that corner. Just lower that in. Might have these just a tad full, but they'll squish. Okay, and this floss also has the corner cut. So put it that way. We'll put this in next. It goes in like that. And we put this in last. So we also have a little corner that's cut on this here. Make sure that lines up with that corner. Put that in. Now we look at this. The fat part of the avocados need to line up. So I'm going to turn this around. If you have the power cord attached, watch what you're doing because it can get pinched. I should probably recommend you take that out when you're doing this part. You'd probably want to do that anyway. So put that in like that. Let's see how we're doing. Snap. Snap. It's a good sign if it snaps easy. You don't want a canister filter to be forced because you mean something's not lined up. So I think just looking through the side, another reason that this is pretty clear, it's pretty easy to see through. Flashlight wouldn't hurt. Those containers are lined up. Everything looks good. I don't see something with a big gap in it or anything like that. So now this looks like it's kind of ready to go. Put that on the on position. So now I've got the tubes attached, the 55 gallon tank that this is going on, which is obviously a little bit small for this beast of a filter, is not going to hold this sideways without pointing it down. So this is where I would want that to be able to be on the back of the aquarium. So we'll just deal with that for now. This is, you know, to find out how this filter works. The next thing is that we have to get water into this canister. The canister has to be full of water before it will work. I could fill it with aquarium water first. We'll do that if we have to. I want to see what this button does though. This is the priming button. Will it start the pump? The Will it start the water siphoning? Can it do it? Wow. That does not work in this case. Can't quite start a siphon. It would help, I'm sure, if the tank was up higher. This tank is pretty much on the floor. It's up a few inches only. So I'm going to have to fill this canister with water from a siphon. So I started a siphon from my little python here. And we've got water going in here. 
All right, I filled this canister up manually. I overfilled it a little bit, so now the floor is wet. Watch that, except this is a garage, so this is okay, but let's see. Yes, now if the canister is full and you use this priming button, it actually does be appear to be priming the hoses. So we'll push that a few times like this. I'm seeing the air go out of those tubes over there. Looks like we're in pretty good shape now. I will plug it in. I'm gonna get out of the water before I do that. All right, what happens when we plug this in? Difficult shot to get. I can hear it. I can see it. Here it goes. It's running. Lights blinking. We'll have to set this thing up next. Now, before I set up the wireless part of this filter, I just like to take a second to ask you to hit that like button if you like this video. It'd help you find more videos like it and help other people find this video. And if you could subscribe to the channel if you're not yet, please do, and it would help you find more of our videos as they come out and help us out. This is a small channel, so it would be nice to get things going. Thanks. So the next thing is to set up the smart part of this filter. You can control the filter from your phone or wherever. As long as you're in your own house, you can't be outside your house and do it from across the internet. But uh, you have to set it up first, and it's a little tricky, so I'll try to show you how that works. So the first thing you need to do is go in your Wi-Fi settings. If you're doing it from your phone, this is an iPhone. That's how I can show you to do it. There's a lot of ways you can do it, but it has to be something that is on your wireless network at home so that you can connect to the wireless network created by the filter. In this case, it says Eheim filter there. We'll connect to it. It'll connect without a password. I've got a check mark. I know I'm connected. And then you go into a browser and you put in eheimdigital.local. Go to that. It's going to go there. I go to initial setup. I want it to be in English, not German. I like US customary system. Uh, I don't need to name this aquarium. I could edit it. Um, fishy aquarium. Okay, and then I'll hit continue and continue. It's this filter. Notice it says Eheim Professional 5E450 or Top Fin, the same filter. That's what it is. I can go into constant flow mode. Uh, we'll look at that first. Go to constant flow. It's set to the maximum right now. Hit continue. Now, this is important. Don't skip this part. You want to connect it to your home network. I skipped this before and I had to factory reset it because I couldn't find the way to go back and find this spot. It's probably in there somewhere. The easiest thing for me was to just start over. So I did. Connect with available network. You don't want to leave it on this Eheim network because you would have to switch to that each time. Now, Maybe you want to. You could do that every time. It would make the filter even more secure. You'd have to remember each time to change networks if you want to control it, and it would not be able to email you alerts. So I will go ahead and put it on my network. If you're really security conscious, don't do that, but I'm, I, I work with networks, so I worry about these things, right? But so you go to uh, available network, search networks. So you click on the right network, you put the password in there, connect. Now it's connecting to my network. This is where it gets a little bit weird. And you have to understand networks and how they work to realize what it's doing. It's switching networks and it's not connected to where it was before and now everything's confused on my phone. That's okay. The filter's blinking over there. We're gonna let it connect. The filter was blinking. We now have a solid blue light, that's good. And there we go, we have got it connecting, this did much better the second time around. It's still loading at the top. Maybe I can hit stop and reload. Yeah, see it's fine, it was just a little bit stuck. So now we go to click on the filter. We have it in here. I'm going to look at the settings first because I'm curious, does it need a software update? I updated this earlier, so even if I do a factory reset now, it takes it back to the updated version. One thing you do want to do when it wants you to update is do the updates. The, the changes they've made are definitely an improvement. I can't show you that because that already happened and now I can't go back. But do the update, 
if it is available here, it says it's up to date. So I'm going to go back. I can see my aquariums here. This is where I was. I can click on it. I don't want to do that. I'll go back. I go to home. Now here's where we start out. Here's the filter. Now we can set our different filter modes. There's filter mode of constant. And in constant mode is where I am. I can change the, I can slide this around and change the flow. Right now the, the angelfish, if I put it on the maximum flow, they're over here surfing. Literally, these two black angelfish, I'll show you. They'll probably get scared. They were over here surfing in the current. Come on guys, what are you doing? Well, it's a guy and girl, it's a pair. Male and female here. Let's see if they'll do it. Go surf. You can see in this tank right now, the stuff is flying all over the place. This has got a lot of output for a 55 gallon tank. You can see the pleco poop just going nuts here. You may not be able to see it in the video, but I bet you can. For now, I'm gonna leave it on the maximum, 225 gallons per hour. I may turn that down. It's way too much for the tank, but I'll let it clean up some of the pleco poop in there. Hit save on that. Now, if you wanna go back, it's a little confusing. Hit the back arrow, it goes to this screen. That's not what you want. What you wanted was you wanted to go where you, this is where you were in constant flow, you wanna to go to overview, and now you can change modes. So it also shows you down here, the degree of pollution is 5%. I guess it's trying to say the filter is 5% polluted and that I would have to clean it again in about six months <laughs> in June. So uh, we go to bio, and this is the phase where it can be at different rates at day and night. So you can set the time of day, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. is the time of day by default. 205 gallons per hour during the day, and then 165 gallons per hour at night if you want it to slow down at night. I, I guess you could. I never thought of that before, but that's an interesting feature. Go back to overview. Pulse mode. I would think of pulse mode as something more for a saltwater aquarium. I wouldn't do it on the freshwater. You could, I guess, but you can say 10 seconds at the maximum and then 10 seconds at 125 gallons per hour like that so that it pulses up and down like waves. You could change that time all the way to 300 seconds and for either, for either one of those, and you can go all the way to the 225 gallons per hour if you wanted to. So I'm not gonna use this mode. Go back to overview, manual. You can just tell it to set the rotor speed as fast as it'll go. Um, if I hit save on that, it, uh, it doesn't look like anything changed over there in the aquarium. So uh, what I want to do is go back to overview. I'm going to set it on constant mode, leave it at maximum. And I think the idea here is it's trying to maintain 225 gallons per hour, even if the filter is getting a little clogged so that there, it's leaving room. So if probably you get more flow at the other way, but with this way, it's saying, oh, I'm a little plugged up. I'm going to you know, just do what I can. For me, for now, we'll leave it at constant flow, go back to overview, and we can see that um, currently, that's interesting, let's hit refresh. Yep, interesting that in, see, it switched, it's stuck on manual mode, I thought, so constant flow. Um, overview, I want constant, and I want to save it. It does weird things sometimes. Now, Notice it says constant mode, but rotor speeds at max. So really I'm in manual and that's not what I want. Constant mode, let's toggle it and okay, that's what we gotta do. Once you're in, that's what's tricky about this. You gotta, to get it to save, get the save button to show up, this little flaw in the software. You gotta mess with the slider and then hit save. And now I am sure it's gonna say it's in constant mode. See, there we go, 225 gallons per hour. And it is well, doing what I want it to do. Now the last button is settings. In here you can change the name of the filter. You can change the name of the aquarium. Uh, I guess the idea would be you could have more than one filter on one aquarium. Change the filter model. You can just reset your Wi-Fi network to a different one if you need to. It shows you how many hours the filter's been running. You can do a factory reset if you want. You can enter back into initial setup. I don't want to do any of those things. One other thing is this settings button at the top. So there's two gears here. The one at the top, that's an important one to make sure you go look at notifications. If you want to get any notifications about this filter, you need to set this. So I'm going to set my... No, I don't want it. That was a test message. <laughs> okay, don't click the airplane. I was trying to get it where I can edit it. So I want to put um, my email address in here. I am going to uh, put my name in here. 
I have to accept the terms. Okay, now I can test it. And with any luck, I will get an email message from it. So let's go back and back to home. So there's the filter. So this was the number one complaint on the reviews was that people said I could get into the app one time and it never worked again. It's because it's a little bit tricky. Try again. Make sure you switch networks. If you get stuck, switch back to the network for it. If its name shows up, the eHime name shows up. Or switch back to your home network and go to the eHimeDigital.local. If you really can't find it from there, go to a DOS prompt on a Windows PC and ping it. Type in ping space eHimeDigital.local and see what IP address it has picked up on your network or if it's even responding. So it is, in my case, that does work. It did pick up an IP, and I can get to it from anywhere on my network now. It doesn't have to be my phone, but the phone's probably what I would use. Okay, I want to give you a few final thoughts. If you've watched the video this far, you deserve to get some bonus information. So a uh, few things. Like I said earlier, the reviews weren't so great on the filter, but... I don't see a problem with it right now. It's filtering the water just fine. It's running. The management system for it is, it works. It just has to be set up right. So that's the thing. If you don't set it up right, that can be frustrating. If you don't want a filter that's kind of gadgety like this, then maybe don't buy it. But if you want to be able to see information about it and control it and do some cool stuff with it, then you know, you need that. It's just, it's going to be more complicated. So there's some trade-offs. I would say that one of the things that worries me a little bit about it is that none of the hoses have any sort of a hose clamp on them. So they're pressure fit. They're on there really good and they may stay on forever, but I am certainly concerned to see a, a canister filter, which you normally put below your aquarium. If one of those hoses comes off, and they're up in your aquarium, you're gonna create a siphon, you're gonna drain the entire tank possibly onto the floor or all the way to the level of those tubes anyway. So hopefully they've decided that the engineering of those, the way the hoses fit on there is good enough and that doesn't isn't going to happen. So if it was me, I think I'd put one of those little plastic clamps on there. I could probably get some. I know my API filters came with those. So that would be one thing. Other than that, it seems really simple. A lot of it's easy. The hoses go on easy enough. There's lots of room for media in it. I've got, as you saw, all those bio balls in it. So it looks like it's a pretty good setup. Uh, the price was right. It was on sale. That helps. So what I'll do is for sure in a few months, whenever I get back to it, I will do a follow up on this and let you know how it's been going. If I have any problems immediately with it, it'll be in the comments below. So thanks for watching and everybody remember, Keep it fishy and have fun. Thanks.